Earnings per share is in respect to I-33. We have introduced this in lesson one, where we looked at the objective of earnings per share. We looked at the main types of earnings per share, which are two, the basic earnings per share and the diluted earnings per share. We have started with the basic earnings per share, and in the previous lesson, we introduced or we did all the analysis of what how the earnings per share, basic earnings per share will be computed and what the factors affecting the basic earnings per share. Before we move on to the diluted earnings per share that was meant for this lesson, we'll try to do a recap. We'll try to do a recap of what entails the basic earnings per share before we continue the diluted earnings per share. Now friends, remember, we are saying we are dealing with earnings per share at the moment. That is IS33, IS33. We said, we talked about one, the basic earnings per share. Basic earnings per share. We said that the basic earnings per share will be computed. Basic earnings per share will be computed by the, taking earnings, earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders. To ordinary shareholders, you divide it by the one knows. That's what you do. Friends, earnings attributable to owner shareholders, we said, earnings, earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders, to owner shareholders, we said, that you take the net profit after tax, the net profit after tax, like that, you subtract the preference dividend for the year, preference dividend for the year, preference dividend for the year, that's what we said. Then you also subtract a profit attributable, profit attributable to NCI, to NCI shareholders. That's what we said. And that's how you get the profit attributable to NCI. The, I mean the profit attributable to ordinary shareholders, or rather the, the, the earnings. The earnings is the earnings, earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders. Now we talked about the WANOS. How do you get the WANOS? The WANOS is we want to do a summary of how to identify the WANOS. Let me come to this and say WANOS, WANOS you need to bring in uh, uh, let me say the number of transactions, the date, yeah, then we have the particulars the particulars, then we say the number of shares, number of shares, then we have the weight, then you have the one -os. We say this, the number one is at the beginning, 1st January, like that. Uh, this is the number of owner shares, number of owner shares at the start. Order shares at the start, the number of shares, you don't weight it. So 12 over 12 is the same. It does not change anything. Number two, we said about maybe we have like somewhere, maybe on 3rd third, on third April somewhere there, we have bonus shares. We say that bonus shares, bonus shares are free shares. So you don't weight it on time basis. So that's the same story. You don't treat it on time basis. Maybe we come on item number three. Let me call it fourth, fourth April, fourth April, fourth April. We have a split, uh, a split of additional shares. These additional, additional shares, additional shares, additional shares due to, due to share split due to a share split. So these one addition, the additional shares, we don't treat them on time basis. We don't treat them on time basis as well. Then we come to number four item. We said about the right issue. Right issue, uh, before I come to that, uh, let me say it is on uh, sixth, on sixth May, on sixth May, let me have first May. Let me call it first May. First May, there is a, uh, 
right issue right issue rights issue rights issue friends here there are some shares deemed deemed to be to be at full market price at full market price there is the one deemed deemed to be to be for free for free this one will not be weighted but uh, they deemed to be at full market price this one will not be weighted but they deemed to be at full market price will be weighted that will be on um, may now from may friends we have uh, january february march and april those are four months so we have eight over 12. then you have this but the other one you don't wait it on time basis you don't wait it on time basis then we come to number five we say it maybe is a uh, first june first june there is share options there is some share options there's some share options the same story that those deemed deemed to be to be at full at full market price deemed to be at full market price this one they will be weighted this can be maybe 7 over 12 they will be weighted on time basis but that those deemed to be for free deemed to be to be free shares to be free shares to be free shares these are not weighted on time basis they will not be weighted on time basis then we also say number six number six may be somewhere on first august on first august like that we have conversion 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 of debentures conversion of debentures and maybe preference shares and preference shares if we have converted debentures or we are converted preference shares then these will be weighted on time basis this is august september october november december those are five months so you take five over 12 then you get that position then we may have number seven number seven maybe is on first november first november then there is a purchase of purchase of assets purchase of assets or subsidiary we have purchased a subsidiary or an asset by issue of shares then you wait them that's november and december that's two over 12 you have them here now you can get the total number of shares yes but we need also what is important is the one knows we need the one knows so that's important sometimes you may you may require to get these subtotals you may require the subtotals you may require the subtotals sometimes you may require these subtotals only these subtotals for the number of shares you may require these subtotals like that like that and like that so those are the, some of the items we have explained in summary in computing the one knows so you get the one knows and you compute your basic earnings per share friends we may also talk about restated earnings per share restated restated prior year, prior year, prior year earnings per share. This restated earnings per share will be computed, will be restated due to the free shares, due to the free shares, due to the free shares. So you come and say uh, the restated earnings per share, restated earnings per share, restated earnings per share of prior year or prior years or prior year. You take the earnings the earnings attributable to ordinary shareholders in the prior year in the prior in the prior years then you divide it by the one knows one knows of prior year prior year but you add the free shares you add the free shares you add the free shares for the presence for the presence for the presence of rights issue rights issue free shares in the current year in the current in the current year 
presence of rights issue, if it's a rights issue, to get the restated earnings per share, restated earnings per share of prior year, it will be you take the earnings, you take the earnings, the earnings per share of the prior year, then you multiply by the theoretical theoretical x right price you divide by the cam right the cam right price this friends is what you do if you want to restate and the reason why we restate the prior year earnings per share is for comparison purposes because a comparison a comparison will not be fair if in the current year there are some free shares which we never waited on time basis and we never received any cash inflow on the same and we are comparing with earnings per share of the previous year where a similar component was not there or had not been taken into account. So that means we'll do restatement mainly for comparison purposes. So we restate the earnings per share of the previous year for comparison purposes. That's very interesting, my friends, as you can see that. Now, after we have done the recap, we'll want to look at the diluted earnings per share. Diluted earnings per share. We want to look at the diluted earnings per share. Diluted earnings per share. In the diluted earnings per share, we are not only looking at the basic earnings per share, but we are also looking at uh, the what is likely to affect the farm in the year. What is likely to affect the farm in the year. Let me also remind you, basic earnings per share, we only took into account what as the transaction that took place in the current year. But the diluted earnings per share will take into account not only the components of basic earnings per share, but will also take into account the components that are likely to affect the farm in the year. Either is the shares that we are likely to convert in the year, or we are likely to uh, uh, we are likely to 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 have more in, in increase in in our earnings in future because of one or two reasons. So that's diluted earnings per share. And diluted earnings per share takes into account the operations or um, transactions of the continued operations only. Now, this is what I'm saying, that diluted earnings per share takes into account, takes into account, takes into account, takes into account, transactions, 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 of the continued operation of the continued continued operations only continued operations only continued operations only in addition to that is just a summary of what the details of the diluted earnings per share you should find it in our study text remember friends but uh, for a summary of what we should know here diluted earnings per share also takes into account takes into account transactions that have not that have have not only taken that have not only not only not only been carried out in the year but also those transactions that are likely that are likely to affect the farm to affect the farm's earnings per share. Then friends, remember, diluted earnings per share, diluted earnings per share also takes into account 
also takes into account as we have already said that the transaction that from the continued operations it takes into account transactions that have not only been carried out in the year but uh, also those transactions that are likely to affect the farm thank you for watching this video don't forget to get yourself a copy of our professionally prepared study text and revision partners Visit our shop along Tom Boyer Street, Pioneer House, 3rd floor, opposite fire station.